Okay, so I thought I'd post an, another example. I'm sort of adding one of these every once in a while. We'll build up a collection of review questions. So this is a question from a previous final exam to do with the general energy equation. So yeah, this is from uh, the final exam 2018. And what it concerns is a what's called pump storage. So and we do this even in uh, Ontario where there's an installation on the escarpment where we pump water up the escarpment from the Lake Ontario to store energy and then we run it back down through a turbine to generate electricity at times of high demand. So uh, the problem states a pump turbine system shown in the figure draws water from an upper reservoir in the daytime to produce power for a city. And then at night there's the uh, there's a pump that pumps water from the lower reservoir up to the upper reservoir to restore the situation. Uh, the design flow rate is 120 cubic meters per minute, so that's going to be uh, 2 cubic meters per second in either direction. And the total frictional head loss in the pipe due to uh, viscosity and turbulence is 15 meters. And we're told to assume that the turbine and pump both have an efficiency of 75%. And so in part A, we're going to estimate the electrical power output of the turbine during the day when it's providing power. Uh, water is flowing from the upper reservoir to the lower reservoir. And then at part B, we've got to estimate the electrical power required to pump the water back uphill from the lower reservoir to the upper reservoir. So you've got to recognize that the flow here is going in opposite directions in part A and B and so you need to write the energy equations in a slightly different form. So here I've shown the the problem statement again. Uh, this is for the daytime situation so this is water flowing uh, from the upper reservoir we're going to call point one is a point on the top of the upper, upper reservoir and point two here as a point at the top of the of the water in the lower reservoir and these altitudes here Z1 and Z2 are the elevations of the top surface of the water relative to some uh, reference line some datum so in this case we're extracting energy uh, with water flowing uh, downhill and I've shown uh, a big red arrow with the water flowing downhill and in this case uh, we have a turbine operating with an efficiency of 75 percent. So you start by writing the general energy equation and you want to write the general energy equation with all the terms in energy per unit weight. So joules per newton or newton meters per newton and so each term has units of meters, but you should think of that as energy uh, per unit weight of fluid uh, passing through the pipe. So when we do that, here's the general energy equation uh, written in uh, that form. So P1 upon gamma V1 squared upon 2G plus Z1, that's the total energy at point 1 pressure energy, flow work, uh, kinetic energy, and potential energy. So that minus the energy that extracted by the turbine, minus the energy that's lost due to friction in the pipe, equals the energy at 2. So P2 upon gamma, V2 squared upon 2G plus Z2. So those are uh, the pressure, uh, kinetic energy, and potential energy at point 2. This is just simple energy accounting. Um, assuming that the flow is going from point 1 to point 2. So we can make a number of simplifications. First off, the pressure at point 1 and point 2, we've assumed these points are right on the surface here. Uh, the pressure at the surface is atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure over uh, 125 meters doesn't change significantly. So P1 and P2 are the same. You can either have them as gauge pressures or absolute pressures. In any case, P1 equals P2, so we can cancel those out. Now we've picked point 1 and point 2 right at the surface of the reservoir. This is far away from the, the pipe inlet and the pipe outlet. So the, at the surface, 
the velocities uh, would be approximately zero, so there'd be almost no kinetic energy. And so we can set v1 equal to zero and v2 equal to zero. Now we can solve for the thing we want. We want to find out how much energy is extracted by the turbine per unit of weight uh, of fluid passing through the turbine. That's called the head of the turbine, h-turb. So we can solve for h-turb and we get uh, h-turb equals, uh, you can see, z1 minus z2 minus the head loss. So you would get the potential energy of the fluid, that's just uh, z1 minus z2, but you also lose a little of x energy because of uh, losses in the pipe. And so now we can make the substitutions. The elevation of 0.1 is 150. The elevation of 0.2 is 25 meters. And we're losing 15 meters of uh, head in the pipe. So that's 15 Newton meters per Newton uh, in the pipe. And so 150 minus 25 minus 15 means that we're extracting 110 meters of head from the fluid as it passes through the turbine. So this is the energy extracted per unit weight from the fluid as it passes through the turbine. And so here on, I've just written that the, we've calculated that the energy per unit weight extracted from the fluid by the turbine is a result of 110 meters. Now, uh, fluid power is gamma hq, so the specific weight of the fluid times the head times the flow rate. And then we also have, for pumps and turbines, we have an efficiency effect here. So the power output from the turbine is uh, efficiency eta times gamma of the water flowing through the turbine. H of the turbine that we just calculated is 110 meters uh, times the flow rate, which you're given in the problem statement is uh, 120 cubic meters per minute. We'll have to convert that to uh, cubic meters per second, and we'll do that in a moment. But I just want to point out that we've calculated that the energy extracted from the water flowing through the turbine is 110 meters, in, in other words, 110 newton meters per newton. But not all of that ends up as useful power at the generator. There's losses in the turbine due to turbulence and, well, inefficiencies in the conversion of fluid power into shaft power. And so that's why we have this eta effect, this 75% effect here. So now it's a pretty straightforward calculation. We need to, of course, convert the volume flow rate from 120 cubic meters per minute, uh, dividing by 60 to get it in uh, cubic meters per second. So that corresponds to two cubic meters per second. And then I think we have everything to calculate the power of the turbine. Oh, yeah, we need to get the uh, uh, gamma of the water, which is uh, the density of the water times G, so 998 times 9.81. I'm just assuming 20 degrees C water here. Uh, so giving a specific weight of 9790 newtons per cubic meter. Now we can calculate the power of the turbine. So it's eta gamma head of the turbine times Q. So 75, so 75% 75 gamma 9790. The head of the turbine is 110 uh, meters and then two uh, cubic meters per second. And you'll see the cubic meters here go with the cubic meters. And you're ending up with Newton meter, which is joules per second. Joules per second is watts. Uh, and then I've uh, converted, divided by 1,000 and rounded it to three digits to get it in kilowatts. So 1,620 kilowatts. And that's the answer to part A. For part B now, you've got to realize that the flow is going in the opposite direction. So now we're pumping the water from the lower reservoir to the upper reservoir. This is the nighttime condition when we're trying to restore energy uh, to the upper reservoir. So energy is being added by the pump in this case. So our energy equation, so our general energy equation, again, with all the terms in energy per unit weight, is a slightly different form here. Now we're going flow from, we're going from 2 to 1 here. Again, considering points right 
point two is at the at the surface of the lower reservoir, and point one is at the surface of the upper reservoir. So now we have the energy at point two, pressure energy, kinetic energy, plus uh, elevation energy, uh, gravitational potential energy. So the energy at point two, plus the energy to add the pump, minus the energy that's lost in the pipe, equals uh, the total fluid energy at point one. Again, we can make the same sort of simplifications. The pressure at point one and point two here is atmospheric pressure, which we assume doesn't change significantly over 125 meters. So P1 and P2 uh, cancel out. Similarly, point one and point two are at the surface of the water, well away from the inlets to the pipe. So the velocities at those locations are approximately zero. So now we can solve for the thing that we want, the energy added by the pump. So this is the head of the pump, the energy added per unit weight. Solving for the head of the pump. So what this is telling you is the pump has to provide the gravitational potential energy and also has to overcome the losses in the pipe. We can make the substitutions. Z1 is 150 meters, Z2 is 25 meters, and the head loss in the pipe is 15 meters. So that gives the total energy added that has to be added to the fluid by the pump uh, equal to 140 newton meters per newton, or 140 uh, meters. That again, that's the energy added per unit weight to the fluid by the pump. So I've rewritten that result here that the head of the pump that we've just calculated is 140 meters. And now we use our definition of uh, fluid power, which is gamma HQ. But in this case, we divide by the efficiency of the pump. This is because the pump is only 75% efficient in adding power to the fluid. We need to add 140 newton meters per newton and we need to put more energy into the pump uh, because it's not 100% efficient. It's only 75% efficient in transferring energy to the fluid. So the pump requires more power, uh, the shaft power, than is actually added to the fluid, and that's why the efficiency here, eta, is on the bottom. Now we have, again, we have that the flow rate is 2 cubic meters per second here. That's basically given in the problem statement. And we had have the, the head of the pump here. So it's a relatively simple calculation that uh, gamma is 9790 newtons per cubic meter. The head of the pump is 140 meters, 2 cubic meters per second. And again, you can see the units cancel out and we end up with newton meters per second which is joules per second, which is watts. And we end up with a answer of 3,655 uh, kilowatts. And that completes uh, this example.